So I've been using the iPhone 12 as my main device for the past couple of weeks, and I'm putting together a full review as we speak. But one of the first things that I had to do was try out as many cool customizations as I could, thanks to the introduction of widgets in the recent iOS 14 update. Now I'm all about a clean home screen. So I searched high and low through countless web pages and blogs to find a range of widgets that suit my style. And what you're seeing on screen right now is the final setup that I've landed on. There are quite a number of hoops that you have to jump through when working within iOS's constraints, but with a little bit of time and effort, you can end up with some really nice looking home screens. So in this video, I'm gonna unpack each and every step that goes into creating this home screen setup so that you can recreate it on your own phone if you like, or at least gain some inspiration in creating your own unique home screen setups. So let's start with that wallpaper. There are two options I go back and forth between depending on the mood I'm in at any current point. The first and main one that I mostly use is this moody faded blue gradient wallpaper that comes from an application called Vellum. And you can find this one for free in the collection of wallpapers dubbed 12. And when I'm in the mood for a funner, more vibrant looking home screen, then I'll switch it up to this colorful one that comes from the Backdrops application and you'll find it if you search Paper Trail. Both apps are free and I've linked both of them down below. One thing to keep in mind is that when you're setting up your wallpapers, we need to turn perspective zoom off. This is important for a later step in this setup. All right, from here, we'll long press our home screen and we'll tap the page indicator icons down here to zoom out to a full page view of all of our active pages. Let's go ahead and uncheck each page except for the first. Now from there, we have the icon pack. This is a super clean icon pack from a developer named Shem Goltz. And as you can see, this is a really minimal black and white icon pack that comes in two colorways, one with black as the base and one with white as the base, which is what I'm using. And what's great is that it's much more affordable than most of the icon packs being sold for iOS of late. Now you obviously don't have to use this icon pack in particular, you can choose any that you like, but I really like the look of this one and I do get a little kickback if you purchase this particular icon pack. So if you wanna support the channel, then that is a great way to do so. But either way, with your icon pack downloaded and stored on your phone, we can now go about setting up each of our custom icons. This can be a bit of a monotonous process depending on how many icons you have on your home screen. But to do this, we first need to open up the shortcuts application. Then tap the plus icon up the top here and then tap add action, search for open app, tap the option that comes up and then tap on choose. Now we wanna select whichever app we wanna launch. So I'll start with Gmail as that's the first icon to go on my dock. And then we wanna tap on the ellipse icon up here, then tap on add to home screen, then tap on the icon down here, then select choose file, browse to the icon pack that you've stored on your phone, select the icon you want. Then I always like to remove my app label. So I'll tap the X icon here to remove that label. And then we can tap on add. Then we'll hit done, then tap next, type in a name for this shortcut, and then tap on done. Phew. So now if we head back to our home screen, we can see our fancy new icon has been added. So let's now move that down to our dock and repeat the process for the other apps in my dock. So we'll open up the shortcuts app, search for the open app action, choose the messages app, then tap the ellipses icon, select add to home screen, tap the icon and then browse to the icon pack on my phone. Then we'll remove the label, set a name for the shortcut and then tap on done. So I'll repeat this process for the phone app and the Google Chrome app as well. And there's my completed dock. Now keep in mind, tapping on each of these app icons won't launch directly into the app themselves. Unfortunately, because we set it up as a shortcut through the Shortcuts app, if you tap on the icons, it'll first need to open up the Shortcuts app, then it will redirect to the app that you've chosen. This can be a real drag at the start, but you do kind of get used to it after a day or two of use. The other negative is that you do lose notification badges as a result. And I've genuinely missed a notification or two on my phone as a result. But to be honest, I have also found the somewhat side benefit of not feeling like I need to religiously check on my phone and reply to notifications simply because I'm not seeing those little red badges filling up my home screen. Whether you'd be willing to sacrifice both of these features for the sake of a customized home screen, well, I'm not too sure, but I will say that I've kind of gotten used to it. Now, whilst we've been talking, I've also gone ahead and set up each of the app icons that will be living in the home screen portion of my setup. So the YouTube Creator Studio app, Google Maps, Twitter, Spotify, WhatsApp, the camera app, 
Google Photos and a shortcut to the settings app. Now let's go about creating that empty space that allows us to move our icons down to the bottom. So to do this, we need to download an app called Clear Spaces. The app costs a couple of dollars, seriously worth the money in my mind, even if you don't use icon packs, but the developer of this app was kind enough to give me 10 free promo codes that I'll be giving away over on my Instagram stories in the next week or two. So definitely make sure that you're following me over there to have a chance at claiming one of those codes. But let's long press our home screen, tap the plus icon up here, and then tap on the clear spaces widget. Swipe all the way over to the large clear space widget and add it to our home screen. If it's not already, move that to the top of our first page. And then to get this widget to work, we then need to long press our home screen again and swipe all the way over so that we get an empty page like this. Then we need to take a screenshot. So go ahead and do that. Now, if you're someone who uses dark mode like me, then you'll also wanna switch dark mode on and then do the same process of long pressing your home screen, swiping over to the blank page and taking a screenshot. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, now that we've done that, we can tap on our clear spaces widget. We wanna now tap the light mode space here and select the light mode screenshot we just captured, then do the same with the dark mode space, though of course, select the dark mode screenshot we captured instead. Then just in case, tap on refresh all widgets and bada boom, bada bing, we've now got an invisible space at the top of our home screen that means all of our icons can sit down at the bottom. I find this great for one-handed use, but it also makes our home screen look super clean. One thing to keep in mind is that I am using the beta version of this app, which is how I'm able to have no label underneath the clear spaces widget, but the developers are working on a way to get this released to the public. So I'll leave a link to their Twitter account down below so that you can keep an eye out for that. All right, with that done, we can now go about adding the weather widget that lives on this first home screen. So we'll long press our home screen and tap the plus icon to add a widget. And this first one is a weather widget that comes from an app called Weatherline. This one is just a small widget. So we'll select that and drag it into position. So the app with this widget included is free. And honestly, I went through a stack of weather widgets, both free and paid. And this one has probably one of the best designs that I could find with the level of information that I was after. Another option that I liked was this one from an app called Hello Weather. But a recent update added this persistent purple upgrade text box to the widget which was a bit off-putting. So that's why I ended up going back to this one from the weather line app. Okay, now we need to quickly create another clear spaces widget for our second page. So let's long press our home screen, tap the plus icon and add another large clear space widget. We'll move it into position on our second page. All right, with that done, let's long press our home screen once more, tap the plus icon to add a widget. And the last widget we're gonna select is another small widget. And this one is from the color widgets app, which you do have to pay for. So let's tap the color widgets app and I'm using a clock widget, which can be found under the analog clock section. And I'm using this one here. To be honest, I don't really need a clock widget on my home screen because the time is always visible up the top left there anyway. So this is more of a visually aesthetic widget rather than a functional one. But anyway, we'll tap on that, we'll select edit widget, and then we'll change the background to light. Then tap the color wheel in the theme section here and select black as the color of the clock. With that done, we can now tap set widget. You might also need to replace an existing widget, so do that if so, but then we can return to our home screen. Let's move that into place, and there you have it. Our home screen is complete. And there you go. Hopefully this video has been helpful in getting your own iPhone's home screen to look like mine, or at least as I mentioned earlier, it's given you the inspiration to now go and create your own creative home screen setup. Any questions, definitely feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to hit you up with a response. But aside from that, thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you later.